Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where a Karen gets arrested for attacking a deaf person. Our next Reddit post is from Judge Mission. So, some backstory first. I work at a large grocery store chain as someone who stocks groceries, replaces items that have been left out throughout the day, and various other chores around the store. It's a pretty small store, so most of the employees can do all the tasks. This particular night, I was putting away a cart of items that customers decided they didn't want. Now, I should also point out that I'm mostly deaf. Not completely deaf. I can faintly hear things like slamming doors and loud phones, things like that. However, I can't hear voices at all, even loud yelling. Since I'm deaf, I know sign language, and I have a large pin and lanyard that I wear that informs people that I am, in fact, deaf. In addition to this, I have a small notebook that has a variety of pre-written responses to questions, kind of like flashcards. Communication is difficult sometimes, but I try my best to make things work, and I'm very prepared. Most people are understanding, work with me, and we get through the conversation. Some customers even know sign language. I'm a pretty young person, and I don't look like the typical hearing impaired person, so when people sometimes get a little grumpy because I don't respond right away, they become very apologetic. Not this time. This is where the story gets good. So I'm mulling along one evening, and I decide to get an early start on the overstock for the day, which was filling a shopping cart to the max. About halfway through my shopping cart, I'm in the paper towel section, and I feel someone roughly poke me on the shoulder. I jump and turn around startled to see this lady. She's taller than me, and I'm no slouch. I'm six feet tall. She's very thin, probably mid-fifties, with frizzy blonde hair only held back by a bright red MAGA hat atop her head. Not that there's anything wrong with supporting Trump, but this lady hit all the stereotypes of a Trump supporter. This was back in September of 2020, and, of course, she didn't have a mask on. She begins to, what I assume was yell, judging by the aggressive look on her face. I begin to point to my lanyard and ears, trying to communicate that I can't hear her. According to the nice customer, who I'll introduce in a moment, she was saying things like, I'm talking to you. I've been trying to get your attention for five minutes. She then took a step forward and grabbed my lanyard, yanking it violently, and it became unsnapped from around my neck. She then threw my lanyard to the ground. At this point, I'm very nervous and I begin to panic. I try to actually say that I can't hear, but I'm not sure how it came out because I've never actually heard my own voice. It's at this point that the nice customer enters the picture. I see him round the corner, a 30-something year old man, and he walks up to the Karen asking what the problem is. To be clear, what was actually said was written down for me afterwards. I had no idea what they were saying at the time. The nice customer looks over to me, and I frantically point down to the pin on my mask and grab my notebook and scribble down, I'm deaf, and I don't know why she's yelling at me. The nice customer turns to the Karen and they exchange some words. Apparently, the nice customer says, Can't you see he's deaf? Why are you yelling at a kid like that? And she responds, He's not deaf, he's just ignoring me because he's a lazy little sh**. This went on for a few minutes, and I started crying. The Karen was causing a scene, and people were starting to gather around us. It finally attracted the attention of my two managers. Manager 1 walked up to me, while Manager 2 walked up to the customers. Manager 1 knows how to sign, and she asked me if I'm alright. I say that I am, wipe the tears from my eyes, and grab the lanyard from the ground. My manager tells me to grab my things and wait for her in the employee break room. About 15 minutes later, my managers walk in with a cop, and Karen's been arrested! Manager 1 explains to me in sign language that Karen's been arrested for third degree assault, and the officer needed a written statement and asked if I wanted to press charges. I happily said yes and gave my statement. The nice customer stuck around and I wrote him a thank you note. My manager also gave him a gift card for being an upstanding citizen. That was by far the worst experience that I've ever had with a customer, but I'm just thankful that awesome people like that nice customer and my managers exist. Also, the Karen got sentenced to a few months in jail, probation, and was fined a hefty amount. And honestly, I hope that it destroys her life. Our next Reddit post is from MyGloby. I was picking up my stepchild today for a couple of weeks. I stopped in a very busy convenience store to grab a few snacks and use the bathroom. You know, the usual stuff. I'm trying to pull into the only non-handicapped parking space available, and a woman with both passenger doors open is just standing there blocking me from entering the parking space. I roll down my window and say, excuse me, could you please close the door so I can park? 
She gives me the dirtiest look and says, you'll have to wait until my child is done with their drink and is ready to go inside and use the bathroom. I said, seriously, there are 20 other cars in this lot trying to get parked and you can't close your doors for 30 seconds to allow one of them to park? She tells me that it'll only be a few more minutes and to just wait. Well, guess what, lady? My horn is only going to blast for a few minutes until you close the doors and let me park. She rather quickly shut the doors and allowed me to park. As I was getting out, her husband came out of the store and said, I told you to shut the door. Someone would have to park there. She looked very defeated as she went into the store. Man, I don't even understand the like logic of entitled people sometimes. What does having two doors open have to do with a kid drinking her beverage? They're completely unrelated, so why be a jerk over literally nothing? Our next Reddit post is from Decapitated Roach. So my wife and I are young and don't have much money, so we asked our respective parents to help out with our wedding as much as they could. Her parents, who are amazing people, helped way more than we ever could have asked and never asked for anything in return. They were actually surprised that my wife was able to pull off so much at her wedding with such a small budget. My dad had recently been through a terrible divorce and had moved to a new place. I didn't feel comfortable asking him for money, so the majority of the load was left to my mother and stepfather. One thing about my mother is that nothing is ever simply a gift with her. Everything comes with a twist. You just never know when she'll use it against you. When we mentioned that we needed help, of course, she was more than happy to help. Her gift to us was to pick any wedding photographer we wanted, no matter the price. We happily accepted and thanked them both. Fast forward several months later. Our wedding was finished, and we were barely a month into our marriage. But first, a little more background about the story. My grandfather, my mom's dad, was in the late stages of dementia. He no longer recognized anyone, he believed his dreams were real, and he never really answered with anything other than, yeah, to anything he was asked. It was a rough time watching him turn into this. Of course, my mother refused to believe that he didn't know who she was or who I was, and she regularly told us that we were wrong when we would try to convince her that he was actually mentally ill. So the wedding was done and we were waiting for our wedding pictures. We would occasionally check in with the photographer to see how things were progressing. It was always a friendly conversation. One day, my wife receives a concerning email from the photographer asking us to please have my mom stop harassing her for pictures. Confused by this new information, we ask her what she's talking about. According to the photographer, my mother had been emailing and texting her multiple times throughout the week asking for any pictures that she had finished without telling me or my wife. She was trying to see our own wedding photos before us. Of course, I immediately called my mom, and I'll admit that I was angry. I went about that conversation in a way that I shouldn't have, but still, I felt justified. So I called my mother to confront her about how not only she was treating the photographer, but also how she was sneaking around behind our backs to get our pictures before we did. Instead of just owning up to her mistake, she tried this power move. She said to me, with complete sincerity in her voice, that since she paid for the pictures, she should be able to see them before us if she wanted. Of course, I just lost it and not so politely reminded her that those photos were a gift to us from her and my stepdad, and that if she intended to act this way, then she should have just found her own photographer. When she realized the power move wasn't going to work, she turned to guilt and mentioned my grandfather. This just angered me even more. She said that she wanted the photos so she could take them to show them to my grandfather and that it was wrong to deny him seeing these pictures before he passed. At this point, I had made up my mind and out of pure disbelief, I had nothing to say, so I quietly informed her that she would receive the pictures when me and my wife felt comfortable showing her and that she had to stop harassing the photographer or none of us would get to see the photos. To this day, my mother has still not received our wedding photos. The most surprising part is that she hasn't even asked for them. Not too long ago, I asked my stepdad, who had no idea that this was even going on, why my mother was still doing this, and he said that she was still trying to make me feel guilty about how I talked to her. That's my mother, ladies and gentlemen, always the master manipulator. Our next Reddit post is from Taipan. Allow me to set the scene. An elderly homeowner had her family help clean up her yard, which resulted in two large piles of debris. The local fire department arranged for a permit and a time to burn off the stacks for her. At our fire department, we use stack burns to give new firefighters experience with fire in a controlled area. The permit was granted, and the neighbors were given a courtesy warning. The husband of the problematic house gives the okay. Cut to the day of the burn. 
The firefighters turn up with their two trucks, one for each stack. Hoses are laid out, a hydrant is set up as part of the training experience, and we're all ready to light the stacks. A neighboring house has a children's party going on. However, smoke is expected to go straight up. The signal is given, and the firefighters become happy pyromaniacs and light up the stacks, which really light up. All's going well. Then enters the entitled mother. What are you doing? You can't do that. I didn't give you permission. We politely explained that we notified them and provided them a copy of the permit to light just as a courtesy. She disappears fuming into her home. Five minutes later, the first officer, whose name and contact details are on the permit, gets a very angry phone call. He takes the phone call away from the trucks and the fire. Then we get an evil idea. As in, the Grinch who stole Christmas evil level idea. We turn to the group of kids now gathered by the fence and says, who wants to have a go on the hose? Being kids, the answer was an energetic yes. We had hydrant supply, a surplus of firefighters, and the stack burn was happily burning away. We rearranged the hoses, put out a few traffic cones as targets, and had fun. The first officer comes back, sees what was happening, and grins. The entitled mother comes back out with an I won look on her face to find that her party's been completely abandoned in favor of fire trucks. Happy parents were taking photos of their kids on the hoses, and every kid was wearing a smile and stickers. We always carry stickers. Go on, tell us we have to stop so we don't ruin your party. Honestly, I don't know what this Karen's problem is. I mean, obviously this is r slash entitled parents, so we're all accustomed to hearing stories of Karens getting all bent out of shape over nothing. But if I'm hosting some kind of like kid's birthday party, and actual fire trucks roll up next door. I'd be absolutely thrilled. This is like free entertainment for the kids. What kid doesn't love firefighters? And they let the kids play on the hose? I mean, I'm a 30 year old guy and I wanna play on the hose. I play with my own hose every night, but it's just not the same feeling. Do you think maybe that she was upset because she was just jealous that kids were more excited by the fire truck than they were by her, I don't know, pin the tail on the manager or something? I gotta say, kudos to that kid though, because he's going down in that elementary school as having the coolest birthday party ever. Our next Reddit post is from Bonnie Pants. This happened in 2006. I was in the US Air Force and deployed individually to Iraq, not with a unit. At the end of my rotation, I also took the rotator back by myself. It was a commercial 747 that the military paid to take a bunch of us back to the US. Back then, we typically wear our uniforms, even on commercial flights. The guy in the seat next to me was similarly redeploying and he was also in his uniform. This was usually never a problem because typically Americans are very kind of servicemen in their uniforms in public. We had a layover in Ramstein, Germany and civilians began boarding. These were mostly wives, kids and other dependents of those deployed in Europe. It had to be obvious that those of us already on the plane were coming back from redeployment. We were in desert pattern camo, were glassy-eyed from mental and physical fatigue, and generally stunk of burn pit. Well, this woman with the baby comes right up to my seat and announces that we're in her seats. She said the other guy has to move too because she wants to put her kid there. Me and the other guy were both kind of bleary, so we just stared at her in surprise. I didn't care where I sat, but the stewardess hurried over and says the flight is full and they can't reseat us. The woman shoves her ticket in the stewardess's face and says it clearly shows my seat number on her ticket. She wants to kick me and my seatmate off the flight. Clearly, she's more entitled to the seats than we are. She completely flips out in the middle of the plane and goes off on the stewardess. I stayed seated, more out of shock than stubbornness. I'd been awake for longer than I cared to think about it by that point, and I wasn't reacting quickly to anything. I guess my seatmate was in the same boat because neither of us said a single word to her or moved a muscle at all. We just watched her make a fool of herself in front of all these gawking passengers. She ended up getting herself kicked off the flight. All in all, it happened rather quickly, but it still stunned me. The trip from Iraq to my home station was already going to be several days long. And this Karen thought nothing of trying to force me and that other guy off just for her convenience. I don't know why she popped into my head today, but I can't imagine being married to that. Okay, so one of the reoccurring messages that I always share in my Reddit stories is it's very important to support your spouse. You're married, so it's critically important that you try to have your spouse's back as much as possible. 
But Opie's talking about not being able to imagine being married to a woman like that. I can't help but imagine what I would do in that situation if that was my wife. You can't sit here. This is my seat. Right, honey? Tell him. Um, ma'am, I don't... <laughs> um, ma'am, who are you? I don't know you. I don't know this woman. I, I got nothing to do with this. Please leave me out of it. Like, yeah, it might lead to divorce. But if the alternative is yelling at a U.S. serviceman in uniform in front of a giant crowd, nope. <laughs> no way would I ever do that. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.